Hello dear students, welcome to ergonomics. This video is an introduction. Um, I will present myself again. My name is Maria de Pilat Ferreira. Most of you already know me from, from last semester, from winter semester, we had Design Geschichte together. And we also did together the project, uh, the workshop Life Drawing Life, which uh, actually will have some connections with the physical exercise that that uh, you are going to do now, or your Aufgabe for, for ergonomie. Um, now I will be teaching you in a different context, also in this different format. Um, due to the corona crisis, uh, I decided to prepare the content for you using YouTube and also using the Moodle platform where you will get uh, some theory and well, where you will get uh, images support and where you will get also the formal Aufgabe, uh, Aufgabe A4 where you can read it in more detail. Uh, now in this video, in this introduction, I will give you just a kind of a scope of what we are going to do. Um, originally, as it was planned uh, for the semester, we would have only four sessions. So this is this is a course that is not uh, very extensive, but it's meant to give you an overview on the topic of ergonomics, obviously applied to uh, with a focus on interior design. But I plan to give you this course also to give you a wider scope and not just focus completely on, on interior design. So I will give you a wider scope on, on the field of ergonomics um, because it's important for you to have, to have this awareness, not just as future interior designers, but also as humans and as uh, users. So ergonomics uh, literally means the science of work. Uh, it comes from the from the Greek um, from the Greek uh, work uh, and a natural natural law, and it's a relatively uh, recent science. The first uh, paper that was written about about uh, ergonomics was uh, written by a Polish scientist called Wojciech Jastrzebowski. I hope I'm pronouncing this uh, right. In uh, 1857. And it was called uh, the outline of ergonomics or the science of work based on the truths taken from natural science. Um, in the meantime, of course, ergonomics uh, developed, but as, as you can see, it's from the 19th century. So it's a, it's a really recent uh, field uh, of knowledge and it really developed a lot uh, due to industrialization. So. Um, the main focus of uh, ergonomics as a discipline is to study and to analyze the systems and how, how humans interact with uh, systems, with the built environment, and how these systems directly affect their human body and their behavior. Um, and the focus of or the outcome of ergonomics, uh, it has a focus on safety, it has a focus on uh, well-being of the user, uh, and it also has a focus on productivity. So this idea of um, productivity um, has to do with uh, ergonomics, which is also called uh, human factors uh, very often. Ergonomics as a science, which is uh, focused not necessarily on the object I use, but on the task I do when interaction, interacting with the object or when interacting with the environment. So it has a lot to do with movement. It has a lot to do with how movement impacts the human body and the human uh, mind. Um, and it has to do with this assessment of what um, cognitively a user can or cannot do, depending on the characteristics of, of uh, her or his uh, body and the fit or not fit that the person has or doesn't have to the task and therefore potentially to a job. Um, so these ideas developed largely due to industrialization, as I mentioned before, and were in the beginning especially applied in the context of factory work, um, because in the beginning of industrialization, very shortly uh, it started to be observed 
that um, due to repetitive uh, actions, uh, workers experienced pain, experienced injury. And so this kind of re repetitive uh, tasks and repetitive uh, use of the body in, in certain ways uh, leads to certain pathologies. So this is still a problem now, nowadays. So obviously ergonomics is a field that has a lot to grow and has a lot to, to give to, to society um, in the sense that every object we design, every system uh, we design, system of interaction between the human and the objects and the environment has an ergonomic component in the sense that it directly affects how the human body moves, how the human body feels, uh, adding the time uh, component. So for example, most of our, a clear example that it's, that is still a problem, a contemporary problem, so a problem nowadays, has to do with the fact that most of us work, uh, most of us who have office, uh, office uh, jobs work seating for a long time. So we have a chair and a table, now, and of course the computer since not so long ago, but everybody uses this computer. And as is widely acknowledged, there is a big incidence of uh, muscu muscular um, skeletal disorders that, that come from this. So many people live with uh, chronic back pain, or for example, us in architecture or interior design, Many people have problems with the wrists, problems with the fingers, problem with the neck, problem with the back, because it has to do with how we work. We work for normally long times at the desk. We forget to make breaks. We forget to drink water. We forget to every hour go out and go for a walk. All that, um, all those circumstances that directly affect how the body feels. Um, because when we design and when we design a system, and if we design a system in a way that it's so constraining and so limiting in terms of motions, um, we are indirectly injuring the human body. The human body is a machine that has amazing possibilities. And the more restriction of movement we impose on the human body, the least healthy it is. This means, and that's also my goal with this course for you, is that you as designers, you develop this capability, this sensibility to really look at the environment and see that uh, although we have already good solutions and especially in Germany, uh, there is a lot of uh, research, applied research, especially in the field of, of ergonomics and in the creation also of norms and rules. So you have DIN and there's of course ISO and all these standards uh, are applied are applied to furniture design and they are applied to uh, all, all uh, building building regulations and these regulations are done not just uh, to impose on us what we have to do or we cannot do but they have a focus on safety and they have a focus on uh, reducing the impact that uh, certain design solutions might have in the long run on the human body. Sometimes not even in the long run. Some, sometimes also, um, sometimes also, for example, if we're talking about a machine or, or not, not an, an interior space, but if we are talking about a machine, for example, that can uh, potentially has, uh, has a, a bigger risk of being used, especially, especially in the beginning. So we can apply this to a car, for example, and of, of course, safety and ergonomics um, is a fundamental, fundamental issue. Um, so what I, what I really mean with this course, the goal for this course is for you to develop this capacity to really observe the environment and observe the environment by the objects you use and you interact with in your daily life. And so since we are now all in this uh, exceptional situation of lockdown, we are actually not experiencing a very ergonomic situation in the sense that we are very confined. We are only in our domestic environment. Um, and depending on the conditions we have or the materials we had available, we might be more or less comfortable more or less uh, able to move, 
more or less able to be active um, and of course we are we are also really limited because uh, we, we are restricted in terms of urban urban interaction uh, as well and this of course has an impact for example now we are still in the beginning of the lockdown and this is also an, an ergonomic problem um, we are in the beginning of the lockdown it's only been a few weeks and probably many people already feel the effects of, uh, of, of deprivation, social deprivation, movement deprivation. And in many cases, uh, people who were misfortunate enough to lose their sources of uh, income and support, eventually even nutritional deprivation. So all, all these factors are economic factors. And of course, there is an additional factor to all of this, which is also a really important ergonomic factor, which is the, the level of stress. Stress is probably the most important keyword that, you can, that we can use in an ergonomic context, because stress in the context of ergonomics literally means effort. It means the amount of effort that a human has to do to perform a task. And this task, cognitive task, physical, mental, of course, goes together because now in the field, there's also recently the field of neuroergonomics, which is also evaluating the body and the brain together and how by analyzing the brain in real time and, and uh, while, while a person is um, performing specific uh, tasks, we can analyze the stress level, we can analyze from which point the stress level becomes dangerous, since the level of fatigue, for example, raises too high. And then after a certain point, when this level of fatigue is too high, the body is already producing or not producing uh, the chemicals it needs to be in balance. And this obviously has consequences. And the consequences are, first of all, for the user, which are health consequences, the user does not feel well and if the situation happens recurrently it gets minus 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 so life quality declines 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 and at the same time since the human doesn't feel well the productivity is also affected so the propensity for human error is even bigger and depending on the situation where one is working or being stressed in this sense of putting effort um, the probabil probability of human error gets higher and higher. And in certain contexts, human, er human error might lead to catastrophic uh, events. So for example, if I'm on the road driving for six hours or four hours without taking breaks, without drinking water, without moving, without stretching and so on, my probability of having an accident is much bigger than if I make a break, perhaps every hour walk, drink, move, stretch, just a simple enough, a two or four minute break. Just an example. The same for us when we are now at home. Of course, for many people, uh, you know, we wake up in the morning, we want to know what happens, we read the news, we go to Facebook, we see all these things. Okay, we know, we know what happens. And then it was already one hour, not much movement. And then what do we do? Getting up, doing something. The space around the house is probably not so, so spacious or so not much range of movement. Not going out. Perhaps there's also not, not much reason to get ready and dress, take care of oneself and so on and so on. So what's happening at this moment? Many people due to the psychological stress we are experiencing are probably not feeling motivated enough also even to continue with their normal daily tasks and since we don't know how long these uh, this situation of lockdown is going to is going to last all this situation lack of movement lack of engagement lack of uh, normality might lead to uh, uh, of course additional sense of uh, unease and, and safetyness uh, or, or not being safe and also uh, depression and of course in many 
in many situations this cannot be avoided, but in some situations it can. So your Aufgabe for ergonomy is to stay active. Uh, and by staying active, I mean, I would like you for this Aufgabe to really pay attention to your environment where you live, to analyze it from an ergonomic perspective, um, and to really, to really make a kind of, I wouldn't say an evaluation, but I would say a reflection on how your body interacts with, with the objects you have in your surroundings. And this doesn't mean that at the end of the exercise you say, oh, I just realized that I am so discontent with my apartment and I, I, I found out that the chair I have is not good or this table doesn't work and now I cannot change and I'm stuck with this situation and so on and so on. The opposite. The thing is that thinking ergonomically, we, we understand what works in the environment or how we can make it work better with simple changes. And often the simple changes don't mean only changing the environment, changing the desk or changing the lamp or changing the chair, but changing the task, changing the way we use it, changing for how long, changing the position, paying attention to how the body feels after a certain time. So you probably remember, I hope you still remember, when we did this performance uh, drive line, the drawing life and before you had this preparation exercise, which was actually already in the direction of ergonomics, that's why my colleague and I discussed it before, that you, you did an evaluation of your space and how how, how these tasks go and you did it with, with a diagram, with the lines and so on. That's already a very good preparation. And then when we did dry flowing, drawing life, the idea was through these drawings that you could make this connection between movement, what I, what I described in the, in the movement, what I described in the interaction, but most of all, how the body feels while doing this. Probably some of you the day after had a little bit muscle cutter, depending, depending on the level of fitness, depending on how challenge, challenging it was, or just depend, depending on your own motivation or constitution or whatever. I had a really big muscle cutter the next day. My legs were really tired. I felt like I was climbing stairs for a long time, but probably I wasn't very fit. <laughs> But the purpose of this exercise has nothing to do with fitness. I, I am zero interest in evaluating how fit a person is or not is. This is not the point of the course. The point of the course is that we as designers can understand how we can improve people's quality of life by analyzing the system. The system that is formed when a human interacts with the environment or with an object or, you know, it can be a piece of clothing, it can be a pair of shoes, it can be the handy, all of these things. For example, when this handy was designed, the fact that we press it with one finger, that we put a code like this, that we slide and so on, all of these things were designed from an ergonomics perspective. Because obviously, I mean, some of you don't remember, but the first phones, they were not light. They, didn't, they were not small computers also. I mean, they were small computers, but not as sophisticated as these here. The first handies were heavy. They got really hot when you had it to the ear. Many people complained of headaches when they used them. The sound was loud and uncalibrated and all these things. Of course, at the time we were like, ah, this is new. And there's also an interesting thing that happens. And this is, this is also ergonomics. Human beings are incredibly adaptable. We have an extraordinary capacity to adapt to the worst possible situations. And we find amazing, amazingly creative solutions to cope with really bad situations. And we, we develop and we can even I wouldn't say prosper, but we, we can even go relatively far in, in really difficult conditions. 
the difficult conditions even might be a source for de de developing our capabilities. But at a certain level, after a certain point, there are definitely elements or components that do not allow us to, to achieve the goals we want or that might eventually reduce our capacity uh, to live longer and not just live longer, but living well. Um, for example, if we think about sustainability and if we think, for example, about the problems of our uh, abundance, and if we think about now in the Anthropocene, so the Anthropocene is how it's not, it's the era we are living now uh, in which uh, basically the ecosystem uh, and, and planet Earth was completely transformed by the human. So we really shaped everything now with obviously catastrophic uh, consequences because our level of uh, ambition and our use of resources turned out to have really difficult uh, consequences and now now we have to deal with them this is also a problem of ergonomics because it means that we overstressed the resources we had and when i say the resources i definitely include the human we overstressed the resources to a point that there's no turn back and we really have to do something to change the course of things so this is also an, er an ergonomics problem. Ergonomics has three domains of specialization. Physical ergonomics, cognitive ergonomics, and organizational er ergonomics. Um, because it has to do exactly with this idea of how things are integrated in a system. So humans, objects, environments, humans between humans, humans and planet Earth solar system and if you want to go you know a little bit further you can even say in a cosmic <laughs> in a cosmic dimension but now a little bit more uh, seriously so what is your Aufgabe your Aufgabe which is called gravity is supposed to be a reflection of how your immediate environment at this moment is impacting your human body. So I would like you to make an analysis of how your body feels when interacting with the objects you have in your surrounding at this moment in different scales. I would like you to go from the smallest scale and this can be for example me and a pen, me and a bread knife, me and a bread knife, which is normally bigger, and me and a small knife. Um, the handy, the computer, the shoes, ironing board, vacuum cleaner, hair dryer, uh, beard shaver, chair, table, floor, door, door handle, window, window handle, lamp. How does it work? So I would like you to make a really detailed evaluation of this, of how it works, how it feels in my body. How does my body move when I do it? And how, can, how could I do it differently? And doing it differently can be done in different ways. And here you can have a lot of fun. Uh, and for this, I will give you the link of uh, two, projects I, two projects I did uh, formally with, uh, with uh, other students, which were in this direction. And they were uh, about... Uh, about uh, chairs and tables and also another another uh, project which was about body extensions and body restrictions so body extensions and body restrictions of course has to do with uh, ergonomics in a sense that if you have to design something that restricts the body 
you already have a feeling uh, of, for example, I, I, I am pretending that for some reason my left arm or my left hand is impaired. My, my left hand isn't working for some reason. So I, ha I have here an elastic and you know, now this, this is a restriction. In my personal case, this is highly problematic because I'm a left-handed. So from the moment my left hand is not working because I broke my finger or something stepped on me, you know, everybody who has had some kind of injury remembers this feeling. My left hand, my dominant hand that, you know, allows me to live and to work and then to express myself is injured. I cannot do anything with this. At this moment, this is already, oh, it makes my life difficult because I have my mouse always on, on the left side. And now that my hand is restricted, I just realized, oh, I cannot use my mouse. My, so, okay, fortunately, aha. Uh -huh. Ergonomics, whoever designed the mouse thought about this. Since I have two hands, I can actually, in be, and since this is a very flexible system and it's not fixed, I can actually put my mouse on another side and use it with my right hand, although I don't like it because I'm much better with the left hand, but at least there's an alternative. Okay, I'm a little bit more positive. And then I start working. Oh, I did not think about this before. I'm not really used to working with the mouse on my right hand. It seems to be a little bit different. You remember when we did in Life Drawing Life, we were doing this exercise. First with the dominant hand, we draw. Now we are going to draw with the non-dominant hand. Mm, not so easy. Now we do it with the feet. Not so easy. So this is exactly what, we, what I expect from you for the Aufgabe. I want you to think about all these possibilities in different scales of action. So I will give you the links so you can see the pictures from these projects I mentioned so that you have inspiration. So one project is corporeal architecture, which is about body extensions and body restrictions. And, and you are perfectly encouraged to create your body restrictions and make experiments at home. You know, have fun. There's no right and there's no wrong. The whole idea is that you, you try it with your body as it is and you know, everybody has restrictions, naturally. There's no or very little bodies that have, theoretically, all our bodies would have infinite possibilities. But since we don't live in a perfect world with perfect bodies that can do everything and everything amazing all the time, we all have limitations. So we know our limitations. Um, but you can choose what, what you want to do. You can work with your own limitations if it interests you. You can work with the limitations of, of the objects themselves. You can create limitations. Or maybe if you're not interested in, in this idea of the limitations, you can just explore the affordances of the objects. And this term affordances, it doesn't come too often in the context of ergonomics, but it comes from cognitive science. And I will give you a uh, one of the lectures will be very focused on affordances and this idea of affordances comes from Gibson um, and it has to affordances literally means the possibilities of uh, interaction that an object or a space uh, offers the user to be used. So for example, chair. We have a chair. We know and we learn. Oh, chair. Meaning of chair, object for seating. Okay, well, how, how do I sit in this chair? I sit in this chair because this, the chair is telling me what to do with it. So, oh, this chair has a back. So yeah, I can use the back and has arms. I can use the arms and oh, it turns. So I can turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, there, there's also wheels. Hey. So many possibilities. I can also rock a little. Because actually this is a good chair. Okay, good. Okay, uh-huh. A lot of possibilities. Interesting. Mm -hmm. But this is not the end. There's a lot of things that we can still do with the chairs. So for example, if we want to have fun, 
we can say actually I feel so bored I want to I want to put my my legs here and use it on the side or actually I would like to change my position and see what happens if I oh, you can't see it because the camera what happens when I turn the chair and I decide that actually I, I, I'm tired of sitting so I want to kneel I'm kneeling on the chair and I can stretch and I can use my computer like this for some time or maybe write something on the keyboard and I changed my position so new affordances of this chair that I didn't know existed so the possibilities are endless this chair is a little bit heavy so it doesn't allow for a lot of fun doing experiments but you can also you know tilt it do all sorts of things and then it becomes some kind of conceptual art object that it's not a chair anymore but it's just something that you're having fun exploring with so the two projects that i will give you as reference that i worked uh, before with the students they were called uh, besides corporeal architecture which was body extensions and body restrictions it was mean chairs and tricky tables and uh, it had this very strong ergonomic component because in both cases the idea and the task uh, which i gave to the students was to design chairs and tables which um, don't allow the body to be passive for too long uh, and of course this this was a it was a little bit like a game it was a little bit uh, provocative so the idea was that these mean chairs and tricky tables would be an expression of an, uh, different ideas of sitting uh, possibilities of sitting and then of course we played with uh, with the designs and and what what can we do with these designs and put the body in different uh, poses and creating different uh, situations and seeing how the body would work so i know that at the moment you are very restricted in terms of uh, material also so i'm not asking you to do to do a design to do a, to design and build uh, and build a new object uh, so i want you to do what marcel duchamp defined as a aesthetic of the ready-made so you work with what you have you have probably at least one chair at home one surface that you use as a table so i want you to make this analysis uh, of 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 the object and uh, it would be interesting if you would do it first you can start really you know very brave uh, by me measuring the object okay measuring your own body also and then seeing these how these things if they fit together if they don't fit together because this idea of fitness is very important in ergonomics um, there were two positions in ergonomics in the beginning since it was very related to um, working in a factory uh, the idea was that we could fit the man to the job so how, how can we adjust the person to make this job well done by conditioning how the person moves and so on and so on uh, fortunately we already evolved uh, from there on and now the perspective of ergonomics and is more like how can we fit the job so that it suits best to the person who is doing the job of course the idea behind this is that if the person is the right uh, if 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 the job is well adjusted to the person the person will work better be more productive and of course everybody benefits uh, economically and, and in terms of the larger larger system but most of all the person and this is my my personal perspective i i do research in the topic of uh, human-centered uh, design so for me what's most important is that the human um, the human uh, interaction with the environment is the best possible and serves the human uh, the best but of course in this systematic perspective that the whole um, 
benefits so that it's always a um, beneficial situation for every part involved as, as much as possible. Um, so this is a kind of explanation. Um, you also know from, from the projects we, we did before uh, that I, I work with performance arts as a learning tool for architects and that's why I wanted to do this very active exercise and focused and focused on the body and focused on the interaction on this performative uh, aspect uh, of the interaction and how do I would I like you to express these ideas so I, I would like you to do first in the beginning some drawings uh, the drawings don't have to be very sophisticated but just these uh, measurement analysis of of the objects and uh, also also of, of the human body um, and uh, but but these but these are more for preparation you don't really have to send them to me i am not interested in getting you know to know the measurements of your of your own body this is more for you the fact that you're doing the measurements uh it's it's more for you not to be you know, self-aware and thinking about, uh, uh, you know, about proportions and body image and all of this. This We are not going in this direction. It's more for you. The measurements are more for you to have a notion of scale and to have a notion of how, of, of this idea of, of how the objects might fit to your needs or not and how these can be uh, improved. So we are not looking for any anthropometric, we will talk about anthropometrics, we are not looking for the next canon of proportions or the next uh, anthropometric definition of beauty. Uh, no, that it has nothing to do with that. We are just interested in this idea of how these two things go together. The measurements of the body or, or the, the physical aspects of, of the body in the material world and, and the objects, the surrounding, the surrounding objects. Because in design we have to, we have to measure, we have to uh, define, um, define these uh, standards and, um, and it's important for you to understand how the two things um, affect each other. So I would like you to start with drawing with this uh, with this kind of drawing and then to to make this uh, evaluation of the use I would like you to do uh, you can do photos although since the photos are static they don't really give us a uh, very uh, good impression so I would like you to do little videos for each one of these interactions so for example me and the pen and maybe with your handy or whatever you have uh, making a small video focused on this uh, interaction and then you can do you know the regular interaction and then you can you can change the parameters like different variations what happens when I am writing on a flat horizontal surface, how does how is the angle of interaction and how do I feel? What's, what's happening inside my body when I do this? Where, where do I feel strain or not strain and so? And this is the second output, which is kind of simultaneous. So you should do a little video but at the same time, you should pay attention how the body feels and really recall that feeling. And then do a drawing, very similar to these drawings we did with Life Drawing Life. And you know, you can use color, you can use uh, what, whatever means you find appropriate. This is really free for you, depending also what you have available. But to make this kind of body scan, like, what is happening inside my body as I do this motion? Do I feel tension? Do I f or is it is it fluid or or maybe I don't have really an idea in the beginning? You know, I'm just writing in a horizontal surface. 
that's how it was. And then, okay, so what happens if my surface is not horizontal and it's tilted, if, if it makes an angle? And then it, instead of writing in the surface like this, what happens when I'm writing in the surface like this? With this pen. One example. How does it feel? Where, where do I feel strain? Is it in the wrist? Is it in the elbow? Is it in the shoulder? Is it in the neck? Am I sitting? Am I standing? Does my seat have a back? Or do I have to stand myself? What is the difference? So you can choose. Choose the system and define the components of the system. So your system can be pen, paper, working surface, chair, human body. One system, one example. Another system can be chair, table, laptop, keyboard, screen. That's it. Another system. We are changing different scales. We started with a small one, we went to a bigger one. Kitchen. System. If I am standing, cooking, cutting something, what is my system? Floor, stand, cutting board, knife, bread, human. How does it work? How can I change this system? Sit. What is the difference? Can I, can I reach the cutting surface or is it different? What, what changed? Where do I feel more or less tension and so on and so on? So making this kind, making this kind of evaluation. Entering affordances and having fun, but having fun while being safe. You don't have to do anything super crazy. For example, what happens if I decide that I, I'm, I'm bored of, I want to turn, I want to turn my, I want to make a rotation because I'm turned of always being in the same, I'm tired of being in the same situation. So I would actually like to read like this now for some time and now my system changed or or maybe i want to i i want to write on the floor so i lie on the floor like i would be at the beach and i i read and i write like this and then i see how how long can i do this and of course without <laughs> overstraining myself but why can't i do this as long as when I do it on a chair, for example. What, what is the difference? So here you can have a little bit of fun. Uh, another project that is, a, that is also a good reference for you in this, uh, a reference for you, um, I, I will link, in, link my website and then you can take a look. It's also another project I did uh, with other students and it's called the Corporis Umani Fabrica. Uh, and it, we did, we did all, we created also these very simple architecture uh, settings like and, and situations like baking a cake, um, having dinner, office situation. And we built these very simple setups in different heights. So the whole idea was to see how, how the body feels to performing the same tasks in different um, with the body in, in different situations. Uh, so, so basically it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit the same, the same idea, but we, uh, we only recorded from the outside. We didn't, uh, we also knew what was happening on the inside because we used, um, 
psychophysiological um, measurements. So we could see through the machines the level of effort uh, in the body through the airflow and through the heartbeat and uh, temperature of the skin. We could have we could have this feedback, and we also did some did some uh, questionnaires. Um, so this time we, we will not really uh, collect this kind of data. I am more interested in uh, for this uh, exercise with you, which is also an experiment. I am more interested in your self assessment. So how how can you feel for yourself? How the changes? How the interactions with with the body affect affect how you feel, and how do you express it um, in a creative way? So you you can do the videos are more analytical, so you should do the video so that I can we can see the task. Um, but then there's this level of uh, from the from the inside from the feeling that I would like you to do through. Um, drawing or, or with crayon or with pencil or maybe it's aquarello you, you can choose the way that best uh, represents so for each situation there should be a video and then uh, this uh, representation which is a little bit like a body scan of, of how the body feels from from the inside when doing when doing these um, when performing these tasks so this is your exercise. Originally, actually, I had called the exercise gravity because when we are when we are uh, talking about ergonomics, we always have to think about gravity because gravity is basically this, this, <laughs> the main component that interferes with everything, with how we work and function on this planet. We are constantly dealing with uh, gravity. But actually, I think the name of the exercise is more fitting if we call it body scans, because that's what you're going to do. So this was a small introduction. I will soon upload you the uh, lecture. Uh, you will have a cycle of lectures, not too many, only four, because that was the number of lectures we were originally going to have. But I wanted to start the course officially today, so you already have the task. You know what you have to do. You don't have to know all the facts about ergonomics and anthropometrics to start working. So you can already start working on the exercise. And, um, and you're very free in, in this sense. Just uh, you, can, you can, of course, the more engaged and uh, more creative and and the more detailed are or the more variations you give in terms of uh, analysis uh, and and you know the different scales of views um, the better the better your grade uh, will be this is this is also a, a parameter but don't focus too much just on quantity like oh i have to present as many different situations as possible that's also not really the point um, ideally you should have one example for each scale depending on what's possible in your uh, environment one example on uh, each uh, scale with the videos and the body scan um, and a few variations so i would say three variations for each uh, situation this is this is a good uh, number and i think we can we can have it as a standard for everyone and then of course there's many parameters that count uh, for example you know if the video is well done and it, if it has good aesthetic uh, quality and presentation and also the drawing the drawing doesn't necessarily have to be you know a beautiful drawing but the drawing should be um, it should be an expressive representation of the idea of how did it feel you know like a body scan how does it feel to do this situation like this one drawing 
and then the same situation with it in a different parameters and how does it feel like that and then in the end we have these different these different drawings and we, we can compare like the experience the idea of the drawings that we we can kind of compare the variation in the experience i mean many of you probably uh, already did uh, yoga class or but but we also did this exercise with uh, life drawing life so so in this way you, you are prepared you've already prepared for this idea of doing the body scan and s seeing from within so we so we will have both we will have the video seeing from the outside observing analytically and then the experiential the seeing from within and i think that this is a fun exercise for you to do and and also i would i think it would be interesting for you to get active and really um, and you know doing these things around the house that we all have to do to keep our lives functioning so if you have to iron or if you have to vacuum cleaner whatever domestic task that maybe you don't feel like doing take it as a game and use it as an opportunity and put it in the exercise put it in the exercise take, taking you know taking a bath or taking a shower please i don't have to see you naked <laughs> we don't have to do that but you know you can you you are also perfectly encouraged to make an analysis of, of the bathroom also if you want but you know uh, this I would be analytical and not descriptive because we don't have to we don't have to do it although there's a very interesting book that I will also give you as a reference it's a book very provocative book from the 70s by Alexander Kira and it's called The Bathroom and it's uh, it's a 70s uh, book so very influenced by performance art and you can see very detailed images of uh, use all possible uses of the bathroom and all different kinds of different kinds of uh, measurements and situations and so on and it's a very funny book but it's also not very contemporary in, in some ways the way the book is written would, wouldn't get uh, it would be censored today uh, because many many topics are addressed very provocatively uh, but it's a really interesting book. I think you can find it on archive.org. Uh, I think it's available, uh, but, but I will also check this out. Um, so, you can already start working. I will add the Aufgabe Blatt, so the exercise uh, here. I will also upload it today on uh, Moodle, so that you can start working on the exercise and you will start getting the lectures the lectures will kind of support the exercise but the idea of the lectures is more to give you this uh, theory of ergonomics because of course there's things about that you have to learn about the human body and the connection also with the science of uh, anthropometrics uh, i also want to give you a little bit more history so that you understand a little bit better how the science, how ergonomics evolved uh, as a science uh, and of course examples of uh, application how you directly apply ergonomics in the context of interior design and these will be four lectures that you will be getting uh, sequentially so and they will uh, they will support your exercise uh, as you do it and uh, hopefully also expand uh, expand your awareness on the on the topic of, of uh, ergonomics and on how by designing the environments we live in basically we are conditioning how people move and how people interact and how people feel and how we can always strive to make this better in the way that it better serves the human and society and the planet so thank you very much for your attention and until soon.